reality of my closet. It's never organized. I don't know what to wear. Put on my Victorian shirt and it's just not matching with anything in my closet basically. Just record from the knees up and you won't see the felted part anyway. How's that? Huh? Hot? Sexy? Stop it! Oh, I was saying it myself. <laughs> Does kind of do something for your mood to finish it, have some accomplishment and look uh, at as f*** this time, I will tell you that. Hello everybody, welcome to my channel where we take old clothes and make it fashion! It was a little bit of an emotional week this week and it was also a little bit of a pain in the ass to make this project. I'm not gonna lie. Think about quitting. I, I was crying, I wanted to give up, I just couldn't anymore. Uh, you know, the show must go on. Sometimes you need a boring pants if you have to go to, I don't know, a serious job. I don't have a YouTube channel to be boring. Give it a little bit more shape and give it a little bit of flair on the pants. I'm gonna try to keep it a little subtle. Then I'm gonna manipulate all the viewers to subscribe. No, I'm kidding. I'm gonna Manipulate the fabric by using acid. I keep it subtle though. I don't wanna burn holes. 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 15% of powder and then 85% of gel. Clean enough. So that's like. One spoon is six and a half. What about you guys? But my summer was the. Uh... Basically just rain. I work it. <laughs> and maybe videos as well. So we're gonna start with sliding some cardboard right in between those legs so that the acid will not be leaking everywhere. Wait for that, right? <laughs> then and laying the pants as flat as possible, I'm gonna make some diagonal stripes with tape on it. Did I already say we're gonna do diagonal stripes? Well, now you know. I know, genius. Hotter! <laughs> Placing plants in your vicinity will purify the air and thus create a more productive work environment. Ooh, or something. I read that on the internet. So my gel got like watery thin again, which is what you normally don't really want. I don't think I ever got the texture right. It should be more like a gel so you can manage better. So I want to penetrate the fibers well. I don't want to soak it too much. Making my brush quite dry. So I think you should have the windows open when you do this. Fall down again. Please call an ambulance. Uh, I expected it to already get a little... I just tried to dry it only, but it's not... I think it's time for air drying nowadays. So the acid normally needs heat from the iron to be activated. Yours truly thought it would be possible to combine the drying, applying heat, and bubbling the fabric in one step with the heat gun. I know, sounds clever. Turns out, it was not. Uh, I'm kind of confused that it's not like reacting so much to fabric. I wanted to use the heat as well to create this kind of texture, make it a little bubbly. You know, I've done this before on my channel. However, you guys, I was expecting this fabric to do at least something under the heat gun, but it's doing nothing. It's not even like bubbling a tiny bit. That's why I kept on going longer and longer and longer with the heat gun and yeah, no, no, no. So I was kind of like, okay, indestructible pants. Gonna have a little fun and party over here. Until I discovered. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not funny. After applying the heat, all the spots where the acid has been applied to be turned like much darker and this means you can start and rinse it out. Nothing to see here. Nothing happened, okay? Nothing! <coughs> It was nice that you came, but uh, I'll see you next week, guys. Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys, I can make up a thousand excuses again, but for the sake of saving some time, we all know what happened. I burned some off. <laughs> so, would I recommend the method of applying acid then using a heat gun? <laughs> Not really. It's meant to be iron afterwards, however, I thought the heat gun. And it was pretty quick. I was Here you can see how subtle it can be if you just heat it a little bit less. So that's this kind of subtle bleached effect. 
Then here, holes, terrible. Oh my God, look at that. What better way is there to work on your problems than to just forget about it and ignore it for a little bit? Forget about it. Yes, we're gonna first just make this pants into a flare pants. Let's save the trouble for later. So I'm basically just gonna pin the shape I want in one leg first. The most narrow point of the leg has to be somewhere just under the knee. I would recommend to wear the pants inside out. You will see why in a bit, but it's gonna save you a lot of time. I pinned everything roughly. I'm gonna make the markings where my pins are, get the pins out, connect the dots, and smooth out the line to the best of my ability. When you look at the line on the inner seam, you want to basically make sure that you mirror this shape to the other side. It doesn't have to be that exact, but it might help to make some measurements to make sure that the distance to the side seams is the same, on the same height. Here you see me at the ironing board, getting all the threads out and guesstimating how much meters is in one overlocked side seam. There was absolutely no point in doing that, but um, yeah, it's a lot, guys. Like a lot. I found this beautiful shirt I once made with this kind of paint splatter. However, I never wore it. So I guess we can use this kind of shiny material in the places where I've, you know, had a little accident uh, that never happened, you know? It will definitely make it even more. Okay, yippee yay. Here we go. Cutting the hole out. And why not just uh, <laughs> use a ruler? Ah, there you go. Bye bye hole. Hello, white shiny fabric. When you sew in panels, it's always best to use the same direction of thread. I know it's not the most economical to cut diagonally, but it's the right way. We're a good citizen now. And then, ladies and gentlemen, surprise, surprise. I'm gonna sew it in. Easy going. And because the seams are a little bit hard to press open with this kind of plasticky white fabric, I'm gonna do a top stitch where I stitch the seam allowance on top of the gray fabric. So I now completely separated the legs. Then I have the markings on the good side of the fabric, which we... <laughs> because then we can't see where to sew. I'm wasting so much time just transferring all these markings to the other side of the fabric and then transferring it to the other leg and then transferring it to the other side. Oh my lordy guys. And you just do it like I said before and you just pin the pants when you wear it inside out. Make all the markings straight away on the front, the back, the inner and the outer seam. And then find a way to transfer it to the other leg. So I'm gonna transfer them again to the other side. I keep on moving, otherwise this thing will never finish. Made this curtain in between. It's lacking a little motivation for the pan, so I was like, let's do something simple. Let's finally get those curtains up, just sewing straight on. 80 cents yarn. Do not remember one thing after today? Take this home with you. Things seem too good to be true. Thread broke every 30 centimeters. So uh, it was fun. Use another color for the pants. Let's finish this, guys. What people think of when you say you work in fashion? What you actually do. And this is reminding me so much of my internships. Spent quite literally 80% of my internships working on the floor. Comment down below if you have any experience like that. <laughs> because it's true. So I actually wanted to sew first and then cut off the excess fabric later. That was why I was doing so difficult with making markings on every side of the fabric. If you're very unsure about the shape, that would be a good way to approach it. Like, however, uh, I decided it was too much work. So I just cut it straight away and just hope for the best. Why did I make all the markings and then went in, put all these stripes in between? Sometimes I love upcycling, sometimes I... Hate it. Length of the. <laughs> I'm just putting it on top there. The length of the legs is not not the same anymore at all. Like at all. In Dutch they say veeg me op, which means sweep me from the floor. <laughs> but as always, ladies and gentlemen, I have some great tricks up my sleeve. You know me. Hello, witty people in the back might have already gotten it, but uh, yeah, we just uh, chop it off. And then, as a last step, we're gonna just close all the seams again, making sure to top stitch the side seams as well to make them nice and flat. Hey, did you realize you can basically roll your whole leg onto the arm of the sewing machine? That way, top stitch all the way to the crotch. Well, I didn't. Is that too embarrassing? <laughs> Just only sew for eight years, okay? So I just want to fresh the stripes up a little bit. 
absolutely flawless. Almost flawless. <laughs> okay, that's some flaws. Okay, I know, okay, you don't have to tell me. That was a whole lot of effort for something that looks kind of fucked up, but um, you know, too much time anyway. Would I recommend this DIY to do at home? Did you go ahead and buy this asset and do all that effort? No, just paint some stripes on your pants, be done. You like pair it with some other cool, quirky, weird kind of fashion. This might actually work, but you let me know in the comments. As always, if you want to learn absolutely nothing, subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to turn on the notifications, otherwise you won't see my new video. Thank you so much for watching again. Thanks for bearing with me. Interested in more crazy fabric manipulation experiments? Check out the fabric manipulation playlist or watch that video.